One thing I crave the most on Sunday mornings is the chance to sit and talk about God. One thing I crave every morning, no matter the day of the week, is coffee. Coffee with Farrell is for the people that, like me, want to skip the small talk and get straight to the good stuff. Come sit and make some art with me and drink your favorite caffeinated or non-caffeinated beverage. I'm glad you're here. So I am sitting here today with a cup of coffee to do this voiceover and listening to my intro to this, um, I'm laughing a little bit because I'm talking about how much I love to spend time with God and talk about God and yet I realized at the same time that for some reason there's also this resistance inside of me to things where I know uh, God and I communicate well. And one of those things for me is definitely art. And yet every night I kind of have to talk myself into it, um, sitting down and actually making something and uh, sitting down and actually spending time with God. And I, I don't know where that resistance comes from. And so I'm trying to fight it. So the night before I made this journal page, I had sat down with a canvas and Every five minutes, I'd be like, all right, I'm just gonna make art for five more minutes. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna do this for five more minutes. Um, and before I knew it, I was in the flow and I created this whole canvas just as I was praying with God. And it started off with a lot of anger and confusion and I, I truly felt like I heard from God by the end of it and it kind of blew my mind uh, to have it be such a process for me where I was in a different place at the end of creating than I was at the beginning. And so I wanted to do that again and sit down with my journal. And so you saw me put down some gesso here and then write in it with my Stabilo All Pencil. And that pencil is water soluble, which means it's, it's activated by water. And so I can write in wet paint and wet gesso with it, which I love doing. And um, when you put matte medium over it, it gets smudgy. And so it's not going to show up in the final product and it rarely does. It's more that it's part of the journey for me and it's something that I'm uh, thinking about and meditating on as, as I'm working. And so you'll see me do this a couple of times in this journal project and it, it's really helpful to me as part of the process. So what I'm doing here is I'm using an art journal page that I had just brayered off uh, while using the jelly plate, like extra paint and stuff. And you can see there's some stencils and some dots. Those are actually from bubble wrap. And so it's just a page that I saw as I was flipping through and saw, thought I want to create on top of that. And so that's what I'm doing. And my technique today is that I've just got a big basket of scraps and it's tissue paper, it's copy paper from a jelly printing session. So the black piece with the um, hot pink on it, that's just a piece from jelly printing. And another thing that I've started to do that I really love that I learned from Sean Petit is doing the jelly printing on tissue paper. And so what that does is when you put down tissue paper with the matte medium, it disappears into the background, but the paint or anything opaque will stay. So you can see it even just with the, the striped tissue paper there. But when you put down the tissue paper with paint on it, what it does is you're getting paint on the page uh, without really needing to use a paintbrush or you know having wet paint next to you. So this here was a happy mistake. I thought I was pouring out matte medium, but it turns out it was gesso. The two bottles look exactly the same. So I used it as an opportunity to write a little more what I was thinking about uh, justice. I was thinking about and how God is uh, the just and righteous judge. And so he's who I should picture when I'm picturing somebody in robes uh, dealing justice to the nation. And so I'm kind of calling out to him as, as I'm doing this for justice. And these little scraps are, are really fun and they help me get in the flow because like I said, you don't have to like clean off a paintbrush in between or anything. I'm 
really just ripping and putting it down and not really worried about what it looks like at this point. jelly printing onto tissue paper uh, that's what this piece is here and I just I really just love the effect because you get the texture of the tissue paper uh, but the the paint that is on the print so if you look over on your left you're going to see a very cute very artistically gifted little hand my daughter came in the room while I was doing this and said mommy can I help you and so she grabbed the stabilo all and away she went and I love making things with her I find first of all it's good for me to uh, practice what I believe which is this is just for fun it's it's something I should be able to relax and you know let my daughter scribble on but the other thing is I don't think of it as scribbles and maybe it's just because I'm a very biased mother but I just love everything she does I think it's amazing and so she was working over there and we kind of made a deal like she knew I would might glue some stuff over on top of it and I knew she might then color on top of what I glued down and so we just got in the groove together um, she's using my watercolor markers which she loves because they're mine and she knows that they are special, so they're one of her favorite things to use. The only thing that I regret about that little corner is that everything that she used over there is activated by water, and so anything that goes on top of it is gonna end up smudging it, and you'll see at the end there is a little bit of that that happens, but it really was so fun to have her sitting next to me making an art video and uh, drawing drawing whatever it is she's trying over there, but I love it. Sometimes I come into a piece and I have a stencil that I'm going to use as a focal point or a word that I know and this journal page was not like that. I wanted it to be something abstract but if you look at what is being made to me it looks like hills and mountains and I don't know where that is coming from as I'm creating I'm wondering uh, what is this landscape that I'm making and I have mentioned at the beginning of the video that the night before I had made a canvas that really took me through a whole process and that canvas was also a series of of mountains or hills or some sort of landscape and so it keeps it keeps showing up and I created this whole page with the intent to practice listening to God uh, with art because that is something that's really been working for me. And it wasn't until maybe the next day or the day after that I read a verse that really revealed to me what it was that I had been making. And the verse is Psalm 24, three, and it says, 
Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? And I read that verse and it really stood out to me, the part that says, who may ascend the hill of the Lord? And the phrase that popped into my head was, I want to ascend the hill of the Lord. And realizing that is one of the desires of my heart. I want to ascend the hill of the Lord. And that is what's deep inside of me right now that has kind of surfaced in what I'm creating. And I have that happen often that I will have an image while praying or, uh, you know, while listening to a sermon. And I don't really know what it means, but then God will use scripture to reveal to me what it was and to interpret that for me. And so I was really grateful when I found that and also kind of amazed because, again, I'm not like this is something um, grand and beautiful. It's more just ripping up scraps of paper and how cool that it was revealing something that was inside of me. The word that I chose for this is listen, and so I wrote it out and I'm trying to find a spot for it. And so this whole thing was a practice in listening. And I really loved this time and it was really, it was really wonderful. And for me, the big moment, aha moment, actually didn't even come as I was creating this time. It, it came afterwards, just with that revelation of the desire of, I want to ascend the hill of the Lord. And then, of course, at the time I was like, I don't even know what that means, but I want to do that. <laughs> That's what I want to do. And I came across these verses that I know and that I've heard before, but that were just a reminder to me of what it is that that I'm desiring. And so as this art video comes to an end, I just want to read you these verses and you know, maybe it's a desire inside you too to ascend the hill of the Lord. And just a reminder of what kind of kingdom it is that God runs and that he has and what it is that our hearts are really desiring right now. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire, to darkness, gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast, or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them, because they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. Thank you.